the lotus a petrarchan sonnet a beautiful nature related cultural related poem by toru dat hello how are you this is heena from team walat today's beautiful poem of discussion under indian literature which is a part of our uphesc syllabus and of course school and college syllabi as well the lotus by toru dat published in the year 1882 this poem was a part of dat's poetry collection called ancient ballads and legends of hindustan Toru Dutt belonged to a literary family. She travelled widely in the short span of life she lived. Actually, her uh, time span on earth was only from eighteen fifty six to eighteen seventy seven, and during this lifetime also, she saw great tragedies: the death of her siblings, the moving of her from her native India, Kolkata, to parts of Europe. Okay, but then because of travelling. she could write so much she could compare so much the eastern culture the western culture forming a connection between them between them she's done it all style of this poem is it's a sonnet and also it's a fable and the lotus as i told you is a petrarchan sonnet which focuses on the ideals of beauty across different cultures primarily eastern culture and western culture it culminates into a cultural synthesis or a harmonious blend depicting lotus as a connection this lotus flower as a connection between east and west with this we are in a very good position to begin with the poem these are going to be eight lines and octave i'm already telling you and the next page is going to have a sestet that is six lines so first let's listen to these eight lines understand the rhyme scheme when i'm reading it to your left is the exact te text of the poem so let's start with the text love came to flora asking for a flower that would of flowers be undisputed queen the lily and the rose long long had been rivals for that high honor bards of power had sung their claims the rose can never tower like the pale lily with her juno mien but is the lily lovelier thus between flower factions rang the strife in psyche's bower it's very easy i will explain you everything here love is it's like a mythical poem basically mythical characters they are exchanging dialogues so here love is cupid who is cupid the roman god of love as a person love is a person he has come to flora flora is the roman goddess of flowers flora herself is dressed like flowers she has flowers in her hands and flora knows everything about flowers so love this handsome love comes to flora and says tell me who is the queen of flowers to which flora says that since long there has been a debate going on among influential poets they have sung praises for two flowers they are the lily and the rose and since uh, eternity somebody says that the lily is the queen the other say the rose is the queen but we don't know for sure that is what flora says okay then what else do the bards say bards means the poets the poets say that the pale lily stands tall have you seen lily flowers their stems are like seriously straight so they stand like this so the pale lily stands tall just like juno who is juno she is the goddess of marriage and if you're going to search for juno she is all armed cloaked she looks like a very strong woman okay so juno is this goddess of marriage strongly standing all armed and cloaked right so they are comparing lily with juno basically strong and then they are comparing rose to a very lovely thing rose is lovelier okay now because rose is lovelier rose has its own qualities lily is very bold it has its own qualities therefore an argument begins in the garden in the leafy shelter of psyche who is psyche she is the goddess of the soul or the wife of cupid now is the scene clear basically in cupid's garden the flowers are fighting who is the queen so now cupid is confused he has come to flora for a decision that in my garden psyche is the wife okay 
So in Psyche and Cupid's garden, there is a fight going on in between flowers that which flower is the queen? Is it lily or rose? Everybody is shouting. There is a ruckus. So please, Flora, help us. Here the theme is dialogue and debate. Can you visualize it? Yes, I can. With this, the octave of the lotus is done. Let's move to the sestet. Six lines here. These lines will be said by Cupid or love. Listen to what are the lines. Give me a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride. Mm, but of what color? Rose red. Rose red. Love first chose. Then prayed. No, lily white. Or both provide? And Flora gave the lotus. Rose red died and lily white the queenliest flower that blows what does that mean now the conversation continues between cupid and flora cupid says that you know can you tell me any one flower which is as beautiful as rose and as bold as lily and that is the flower which should be called as the queen of flowers then flora asks that what color what color should that flower be Cupid thinks and says, probably rose red. But then he says, oh, no, no, you know, pure white, pure white stands for purity, right? So Cupid says that maybe pure white like lily. Then he says, maybe alluring and beautiful like rose. You know, he's confused that should I choose white lily? Should I choose red rose? What should the color of this new flower be? Flora ends this confusion when she brings up something in her hand, which is a beautiful pink color lotus. You know it, right? When you combine red and white, what do you get? Which color? Pink. So this pink is rose red dyed. Okay, rose red dyed. Basically, it is white and red mixture and lotus is formed. So what does Flora bring out from her hands? It is lotus, lotus, pink color lotus. And then Flora declares lotus to be the most graceful and regal flower that has ever lived. Here the theme is Indian culture. How? I'll tell you. Points to ponder. Lily, as I told you while I was reading the poem, is associated with Juno, the wife of Jupiter, the strong wife and the goddess of fertility. Whereas rose is associated with the Greek goddess Psyche. Okay, next. Rose represents, now we should know what represents what. Okay, one is like upar upar ka. What exactly is the meaning of this poem? What does Toru want to depict? Toru says, or she means that rose represents Asian beauty because of its red color and origin. Whereas lily represents European boast and pride. But when you synthesize them, when you connect them or when you blend them, the harmony which comes out, that comes out in the form of lotus. And lotus, you know, is absolutely connected with India. So Indian culture, Indian culture is like a synthesis of East and West. That is what Toru says. She is proud to be an Indian. Out and out a romantic poem, a natural poem, an Indian poem, right? A poem connected to nature, not natural, a nature poem. It is romance, it is nature, and it is Indian culture. This poem actually reflects Toru that's native India and her life experiences when she lived in Europe. Okay, now a little bit about poetic devices. Simile, metaphor are used in abundance. I'll give you a few examples. Simile's example, a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride. Metaphor, the pale lily with her Juno mean. Mean is like mannerism, appearance, okay? The next metaphor is the queenliest flower that blows, queenliest flower. And next metaphor is flower factions rang the strife. They started fighting. Now personification, of course I told you, love is a person, he's this handsome gentleman. Flora is a woman. She's like this beautiful girl who knows all about roses. And if you see, or if you go back in mythology, love is Cupid and Flora is the goddess of flowers and nature. Alliteration, repetition of sounds. Look at few examples. Love came to Flora asking for a flower. Next alliteration, 
the lily and the rose long long had been rivals for that high honor next alliteration flower factions more you are free to find out read the poem again <laughs> poem I told you. It's a Petrarchan sonnet and it's a fable. Basically the poem is divided into octave and sestet and it is after octave there is a volta or a turn. Basically in octave you will find that a discussion goes on between uh, which flower should be the queen and then in finally sestet the conclusion or a new lotus is formed, is given birth. The lotus is actually lotus you can say it is the birth of lotus, right? So this happens in the cestet. Rhyme scheme, please read. It is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, D, C. Okay. And theme, as I told you, it is cultural synthesis or beauty across different cultures. With this, we are done with the lotus by Toru Dutt. I love this poem. What a short poem, but what a deep meaning poem and such a beauty to read, right? <laughs> Take care of yourself. This is Hina from Team Wallet. And if you liked our channel, you have to subscribe right now. And of course, drop down a comment. Bye.